It hasn't been that long since we've talked about gamma ray bursts. In a recent episode, we looked at what might happen if a gamma ray burst were to hit the Earth, and the effects were pretty terrifying. These immense explosions are simultaneously some of the brightest phenomena in the known universe, and the source of most of the gravitational waves we've detected here on Earth. While scientists have speculated and had a decent idea of what causes these bursts of energy, they haven't been totally sure, meaning that the sources of these explosions have remained a great mystery. Well. At last, we finally have confirmation of what causes GRBs thanks to researchers at the Australian National University in Canberra. And the answer may surprise you. But before we jump in, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, join the mailing list, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. bursts are intense blasts of cosmic radiation. They're observed in other galaxies, and according to NASA, if their light was measured against our suns, a typical GRB's light would be about a million trillion times more powerful than poor old Sol. Gamma ray bursts, or GRBs, are the most powerful electromagnetic events in the universe. For a while now, it's been theorized that they result from supernova explosions and superluminous supernovae as well. Say that five times fast. A superluminous supernova, or SLSN for short, because life is better with abbreviations and acronyms, is a supernova that is 10 or more times brighter than your garden variety supernova. The first gamma ray burst was observed on July 2nd of 1967. The Vela 4AB satellite, launched by the U.S. Air Force in October of 1963, made the observation. Though the actual determination for the observation would come two years later, in 1969. The results, however, would not be declassified and published until 1973. After the launch of the IMPS 6 satellite in March of 1971, NASA observed X-rays in gamma ray bursts accidentally. Interestingly, the IMPS 6 was not designed to observe these phenomena, yet the satellite ended up doing so anyway while observing solar flares. In September of 1971, the seventh orbiting solar observatory, or OSO 7, was launched. It carried an X-ray telescope designed to observe and measure hard X-rays. The satellite also had a gamma ray monitor. Between 1972 and 1973, Los Alamos scientists analyzed analyzed various gamma ray events, like those observed by Vela, determining that these newly observed phenomena were indeed of cosmic origin. From 1974 to March of 1979, data from the Soviet Konos satellites was published, confirming the detection of gamma ray bursts. The Interplanetary Network, IPN for short, was started. These were a series of detectors that worked in unison meant to study the sun and planets. They detected gamma ray bursts through a process of triangulation. The IPN showed that GRBs were not coming from known sources of interest, such as X-ray emitting phenomena. And finally, an unusual gamma ray transient was found in 1979 and was localized to the N49 supernova remnant in the Large Magellanic Cloud. This event in 1979 caused something of a controversy that would last through the next decade. One side of the debate maintained that a gamma ray burst could not come from outside our galaxy, that it would be too far away, and that this observation had to have been an accidental coincidence. Oh, how wrong they were. And the other maintained that two classes of gamma ray sources existed, and that this particular instance was separate from other GRB phenomena. Later, a study of soft gamma repeaters by the ACA proved the latter to be correct, and that gamma ray bursts definitely do come from very distant sources. Through the 1990s, NASA launched the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, and among its payload was the Burst and Transient Source Experiment, BATSY for short. And here we go. Yes, that is also what the Joker calls Batman. This device ended up detecting 2,700 gamma ray bursts throughout the decade, and proved without a shadow of a doubt that GRBs are uniformly observed across the sky, and are not connected to the plane of the Milky Way. It also suggested that gamma ray bursts possess ridiculous energy, since they are detectable across the observable universe. This discovery marked a paradigm shift, finally marking these incredible phenomena as cosmological. By the mid-90s, NASA launched the Rossi X-ray Timing Explorer, which was designed to study how X-ray emission lines change throughout time. The X-ray Timing Explorer has been used time and time again to observe X-ray afterglow of gamma ray bursts. It was also during this period that a joint collaboration of the Italian Space Agency and the Netherlands Space Agency launched the bipo sax satellite. Yes, that sounds exactly like something that Douglas Adams would come up with. Astronomers used bipo sax to observe an X-ray and associated the phenomena with a gamma-ray burst for the first time, ushering a new era in. 
1999, the afterglow of a gamma ray burst was detected within seconds of the blast. After careful analysis, astronomers determined that the energy released by the gamma ray burst is channeled in two narrow jets, and that we can only detect this beam of energy if it is angled along our line of sight. The energy of GRB 990123 was 100 quadrillion times more luminous than our Sun, and 1,000 times more luminous than observed quasars. Also in 1999, GRB 990705 was detected, leading to an analysis of the emission lines from the afterglow that showed that iron absorption is a distinct feature of supernovae. Remember our video on killing the sun? Yeah, when stars try to fuse iron, they die in seconds. Finally, in December of 1999, the observations of emission lines from the afterglow of GRB 991216 by ASCA, a Japanese X-ray satellite, and NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory detected lines of iron. This observation was instrumental in helping to pinpoint the distance of the gamma ray burst. And through the 2000s, we continued to observe gamma ray bursts, and the mystery of what exactly caused these phenomena continued. This marks more than 30 years of observations. Observations that led to this explanation. Now, it's also thought that the collision between two neutron stars can lead to the creation of another type of GRB known as a short gamma ray burst. But the biggest problem with identifying the exact cause, or mechanism, if you will, behind these immense cosmic explosions is just how ridiculously far away they are from us. All the GRBs we've observed thus far have been detected from origin points outside of our galaxy, usually billions of light years from the Earth. In fact, in some cases, the origin of the GRB is so far away that it appears to come from nowhere. These these are called naked sky GRBs. Take note of that term, it will be important later on. Given that, scientists can't really put a finger on why gamma ray bursts happen. But as we explained in the intro, thanks to a study published on September 15th, the mystery surrounding these things may finally be solved. The new study makes a new proposal using mathematics as the basis for its explanation for gamma ray burst phenomena. In the study, researchers modeled the interactions between gamma rays and other powerful sources of energy, like that of cosmic rays, and Matt Roth, lead study author and astrophysicist at the Australian National University in Canberra, says, We modeled the gamma ray emission from all the galaxies in the universe, and found that it is star-forming galaxies that produce the majority of empty sky gamma ray radiation. Yeah. I know, I'm surprised too. But does this mean that forming stars are the primary culprits of these gamma ray bursts? Well, no. In addition to this observation, Matt and his team found that gamma ray burst frequency depends on other key factors other than active star formation in galaxies. Those include the size of the galaxy and the initial energy of the cosmic rays created by supernovae in said galaxy. Soon, Matt and company had a model that could predict the rate of gamma ray bursts for every size of galaxy, but they wouldn't stop there. They took that model and compared it to a real-life survey of gamma ray radiation from NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. So, what happened when Matt's team compared their simulation with the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope data? Did it match? Or was it a horrible mismatch? Like some type of horrific abomination? A monstrous simulacrum? See what I did there? Well, to the team's surprise, the data matched 100% to their simulation. They also found that supernovae in star-forming galaxies are the most likely culprit behind a majority of gamma ray bursts observed in other galaxies. And the team has very strong suspicions that all GRBs can potentially be explained by supernovae. Matt Roth went on to say, It's a significant milestone to finally discover the origins of this gamma ray emission, solving a mystery of the universe astronomers have been trying to decipher since the 1960s. So does this mean that black holes and neutron stars don't cause gamma ray bursts? Yes, but they are still responsible for some of the gamma rays that our satellites pick up. However, they are not responsible for empty sky gamma ray bursts. That honor falls to supernovae alone. The team concludes that black holes simply aren't necessary, that exploding stars in faraway galaxies are more than sufficient an explanation. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button and comment down below. And hey, if you dig gamma ray bursts, check out this video on what would happen if one hit the Earth in modern times. And check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.